Welcome to the Kale Hauser Leadership Secrets Podcast. Today, let's identify your inefficiencies. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Kale Hauser Leadership Secrets Podcast. My name is Kale Hauser. I am the co founder and CEO of Kale Hauser Leadership, where we help small businesses with their leadership, with building teams, with gaining confidence, ultimately inspiring their teams to achieve tremendous growth and confidence. If you have not checked us out on social media, please do make sure you follow at Kale Hauser um, on pretty much all the platforms, Twitter and LinkedIn and TikTok and Instagram and Facebook. If you have not joined yet, make sure you subscribe to Kale Hauser Leadership on there where I post a lot of um, great additional content as well as this podcast. And I do appreciate you being here and, and subscribing to this podcast and helping me grow the channel. It is fantastic. I enjoy doing it and hopefully it is providing you some value. That in itself was an inefficiency I don't know if you recognized it, but there were things in there that I kind of paused on and I, I didn't have pre-planned. I was just kind of going off, off the cuff there. And I want to talk a little bit about inefficiencies in your day, inefficiencies in your life that you continue to allow to happen because maybe they're distractions to you. Maybe you haven't figured out a new system or a plan to attack them and eliminate them or get better at them or become more efficient at that. But I want to talk about that so we can hopefully identify some of them. And inefficiencies really are just time wasters. That's what an inefficiency is. It's something that you could do faster, better, uh, more quality, but instead it's being done less quality, slower, taking more time, um, all those types of things. And they're just time wasters. And as you are probably aware, as business owners, as leaders, time is pretty much our absolutely most valuable asset. If you are anything like me, you've got a list of to-do things that continually grows more than it gets taken off of because my time is taken up by so many different things throughout the day. And you are absolutely no different between family, um, and that's immediate and extended, between friends that want to hang out with you, that's future friends and, and past friends and old friends, social media, all those types of things are and can be time wasters if we don't learn how to be more efficient in how we handle them and handle our time. I am absolutely not talking about time management. Time management, I think, is something that is a really great idea for a business major that wants to get their PhD to do an entire dissertation and research on about time management. I think that time management as a concept is, while at the surface is like, yeah, sure, we should be able to manage our time, what you really need to be focusing on is prioritization of your time, not managing of, hey, am I spending an hour doing this and two hours doing this and I need to only spend you know five minutes brushing my teeth and getting ready for bed and blah, 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 like all these, this micromanaging of your time. It's more about prioritizing the tasks that will get you the results that you want. Does that make sense? And that's kind of how I'm approaching this when I talk about identify your inefficiencies. It's about eliminating the time wasted in your day by things that are distracting you from the big thing that you need to get done or the big things that you need to get done that day. And uh, something that was brought to my attention and now that I'm aware of it, I absolutely have been guilty and continue to be guilty of that. And this is this concept of being an email hawk. You know, you're sitting at your desk or your browser or on your laptop at the local coffee shop, wherever it is that you do your thing, and you've got your email program open, whether that's Outlook or Gmail or Yahoo or whatever other service that you use, and you get that little bing, bing, oh, here comes another email, and man, most of them are garbage. Most of them are like, hey, this sale's happening at this store or um, whatever Facebook notification sends you an email. All those types of things, you become an email hawk. It's the thing that you allow to take you away from doing the things you know you need to do for your business by just watching that email. Now, I'm not saying if you're waiting for an email for that proposal, for that response to your proposal to say, yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's seal this contract or that email from DocuSign saying that client went through and signed all the documents and contract that you sent them. Yeah, that's, an, that's something else entirely. But, that's, but I'm referring more to just you're doing your daily tasks, da, 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 da. And you just keep going back. Oh, did I get any new emails? Refresh, refresh, refresh. Because some of us are even guilty of that going up. Oh, update folder. Anything new come in that my server just didn't auto-populate as it hit my, hit my inbox? 
who's guilty of this? I've been guilty of this, absolutely. Especially when I was in the Air Force and I was literally trying to waste my time of just sitting around. Oh, better refresh that email, see if I got anything. Oh, wait, man, it's two o'clock in the morning. No one's sending you emails, but you become this email hawk to waste your time. The second I want to talk about, and it's kind of a big one, social media. Social media is now a part of our life. Social media at its advent was something that was like, oh, it's kind of a cool concept and, and at its purest form with the intent of keeping us connected and checking in on family that we're separated by distance and it's more difficult to kind of understand and be a part of their life. Absolutely a phenomenal tool. It has morphed slightly, in my opinion, into something that is consuming in nature. You know, the, the latest stats on how much people spend on social media, or like how much time they spend on social media is astounding. And if you have teenagers in your household or, or you're a, a young person yourself and you've more grown up with this service, you can recognize it. You can go, man, my go-to is whether it be sitting on the toilet or first thing in the morning when you get up or the last thing in, you do in bed is you're sitting there and under the covers, you scroll through your feed and just see what people are doing. But it goes beyond that too if you're at work. You're like, okay, you've come to this small break. I'm just going to go over here and check YouTube or I'm just going to go over here and check my Instagram feed or, or see what this person is up to. And then the next thing you know, you're 15 minutes down the, the pipe, 30 minutes down the pipe, an hour. You're like, holy smokes, how did I get on this YouTube rabbit hole of watching old 80s music videos, you know, watching the Aerosmith live concert recordings because that's what you were into. You like love Aerosmith. And now you just smoked an hour of your day or even 15 minutes, but you do that like four or five times a day. Like, oh man, I'm just checking up on my social media. Did I get any likes? Now this is different than if social media is a massive part of your business and you're using it to create customer engagement. So yes, you're going on and responding to comments and promoting different things, or maybe setting up your ad account, all those types of things. You understand that's an entirely different concept. And what I'm talking about is the social media for consumption purposes. Like you're just scrolling through and seeing the latest pictures on Instagram of some influencer doing this and you know, blah, 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 blah. There's a thousand different influencers for all different kinds of interests. But if you're doing that, even for five minutes, but you do it like 20 times a day, holy smokes, your, your day is just getting eaten up and it's inefficient. So I would highly encourage you to look at, and if you need to do something as extreme as scheduling time like hey okay i'm gonna get these five minutes this is when we do social media set your alarm or have your own your business partner or your spouse or whomever that's near you hold you accountable to that then do that i think there might even be apps that help you with that limit your use of of those types of things because it can be a problem but what we're trying to do is yes identify the big problems the big time wasters and inefficiencies in your life but also making small incremental improvements if this is not a big problem but you know it can get better right maybe you're not wasting an hour of your day on social media but you're wasting 20 minutes of your day when you recognize like for what like it's not serving me anything so now you need to get that just further down like maybe get on there wish your couple friends their happy birthdays as they come come up and then move on does that make sense so inefficiencies. This other one, I've done a couple of podcasts on this, and this is something near and dear to my heart in the form of this drives me insane, is inefficient meetings. You, as the business owner, you as the leader, you as the department head, you as the supervisor, manager, whatever your role is, where you may be in charge of running, directing, and organizing meetings amongst your team members, there are so many ways that you can make these more efficient and more respectful of everyone's time, including your own. Whether it be you know, leading up to the planning and the venue and uh, the agenda, all those things in the actual execution and running of the meeting, whether they can be so much more efficient. I would highly encourage you, go back, listen to my podcast series on running meetings and get rid of all the things that drive people crazy when they go to a meeting if you are the one in charge of meetings. But recognize that meetings historically are nothing but massive, not, I shouldn't say nothing but, but are massive time wasters for all involved. If you've got one or two or three or things on your agenda, talk about those one, two or three things on the agenda. Don't allow the meeting to just morph into this crazy time waster for everyone involved, including yourself.
Okay, I'll, I, that's all I'll say about that on meetings. Just recognize that meetings can be one of the most inefficient uses of times in your organization. Is there another way that information can be communicated? You know, all those types of things that you can look at. Please make sure to check out the, that past episode. All right, this one's a little bit more, this, this next one is a little bit more touchy in the form of this is personality based. But I, I wanna recognize and hopefully help you recognize that there are certain people in your organization that are small talkers, right? They're, they're the ones that wanna be like, oh, how was your weekend? Oh, did you see the football game? Like, there's, you know, they wanna talk about the weather, they wanna talk about the traffic, they wanna talk about uh, their neighbor's dog, all these little small talk things, but they're absolute time suckers because there's a difference between creating these conversations that are designed to create connections like legitimately like, hey man, what are you working on? How was your weekend? How was that family trip that you took? Versus the, like, I don't really give two rips that you're dealing with your neighbor's dog that comes and does his business on your yard and you're not doing anything about it. You're just complaining. Like, yeah, it's raining outside. So what? You know, unless, unless you are in a party planning business where raining outside impacts your business because there was supposed to be a wedding and you're supposed to set up and do this catering and it impacts it and it's been delayed, right? Obviously that's a, a relevant topic. But if within a minute of talking with somebody, they're talking about, oh, you know, hey man, it's supposed to be cloudy this weekend. Or, you know, have you seen the latest news about this tropical storm moving in or this blizzard coming across, right? They're just sucking the life out of you with these small talk time wasting. Now, I'm not saying be rude, but I'm also encouraging you to figure out ways based on the situation to eliminate that. Say, you know, hey, Sally, hey, Jeff, like I I love talking to you and I wanna talk to you, but I'm not that interested in the weather, okay? Like, hey, you've been complaining about your neighbor's dog for the last two weeks. It's time to do something about it, right? Be the person that holds people accountable. Be the person that encourages them to improve and get better. Like, you know, I get it. You know, the weather is important, but there's so much more interesting things we could be talking about. Like either that or let's figure out how to make you a meteorologist so you can now go talk about the weather all day long, whatever that is. But this small talk in the form of when you know you need to be doing other things doing other things to impact your business and you're allowing, you know, whether you have a team of five or a team of 50, it only gets exasperated as your team grows and people want more of your time. You need to be conscious of it and aware of it, but not in a mean way. It doesn't have to be in a mean way. Cause the whole point of this is to identify your inefficiencies, but because you're seeing those, it means you don't have a plan. It means you haven't prioritized. It means you have not set up your big domino. Because when you have that big domino, and again, we've talked about this in previous podcasts, that one thing that if you knock down, if you get accomplished, it will just cascade effect all the other little things behind it. But if you fail to identify that, you allow inefficiencies to consume your day, to consume your time and efforts because you haven't prioritized and planned appropriately. So you're now looking for any kind of distraction to keep you going and you're allowing any distraction to come up because you haven't prioritized like, hey, I get it, you know, um, there's this meeting going on over here. I don't have time to run it. So I'm gonna basically, you know, shoot out this email communication of all the critical points and set up taskers, but I've got to focus on this thing over here, right? It's okay to cancel meetings that aren't critical. It's okay to reschedule, to figure out different ways of doing things in order to be more efficient in your day and get more things done. Namely, the big domino, the, prior, the priorities. Because this all goes back to having a lack of prioritization in your life and in your business to know what you need to focus on to stop allowing these inefficiencies to take place. Does that make sense? If you have a different opinion or if you have an example of this, please, please, please let me know. Leave a comment. I'd love to, to hear it and read it. Um, and we can certainly talk about it. Shoot me an email at kale at kalehauser leadership. If there's something I can help you with, I would love to do so as well. Please let me help you. Please let Liz and I um, get into your world and you into our world so that we can make you more efficient and we can figure out your big dominoes and help you knock those down. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. No matter where you're at in the world, have a fantastic afternoon. Bye.